Good afternoon, YouTubers. Um, so, I, uh, we're going to take a little break from the Bronco and some of the project stuff. Uh, there's a video that I want to make for one of my viewers that uh, had asked me a couple of questions. Uh, Joel Shell says, I have a couple of questions. Uh, I am totally blind, so I can only hear your videos. What are pinstripes? Also, can you do a video description of the 68 Ford? Now, I have never tried to do anything like this before, and I can't imagine what it must be like to not have sight and see all the beautiful things, especially in the automotive world, that, uh, that this world has to offer. So I'm going to do my dangdest to describe this Ford um, in such a way that maybe you can picture it in your head and to <clears throat> try and explain maybe what pinstripes are. Um, probably not going to get this all right, and, uh, you know, but I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, it's something I really want to do for you um, and help you try and see what I get to see and, and hopefully maybe describe some of the reasons why this body style of Ford, <clears throat> the 67 to 72s, are some of my favorite, favorite pickups. Some of the most beautiful vehicles that, that I can think of on the road. Pickup wise anyways. There's a lot of beautiful vehicles out there. But at any rate, here goes nothing. So... You ask about pinstripes, and what are pinstripes? The best way that I can describe pinstripes are they are hand-painted designs that are put on to, uh, typically they're speaking, in a, typically speaking, they're put on in a lot of automotive applications, uh, hoods and dashboards, and, and the best way I can describe it is that they're typically, they're going to be about eighth inch wide, hand-painted lines, uh, and uh, they're usually done in the most ornate designs. You'll see uh, most of the ends of the lines, and uh, you know they may merge with several different colors, but most of the ends of the lines will come to sharp points, but all of the other, the other lines that go in between will go in sweeping, sweeping lines. <clears throat> in the case of my 68, these pinstripes are a dark blue and a white which is in a stark contrast, uh, I guess, or in a matching design maybe would be the better. I, you know, I, I think it's a stark contrast, this, this dark blue, because the pickup itself is a very light, faded, very weathered blue, and white on the bottom, uh, meeting midway throughout the pickup. And the pinstripes are a, are a dark, dark blue, a true blue and white. One of my favorite things about these pickups is the hood and the front end. And as you go across the hood in the front end, the hood is split into three distinct sections. And you've got a flat section on either side lower than the middle of the hood. And then a small section in the middle that is pointed up and poked forward, you know, like it's pointed at something. It comes down the front of the hood, and the hood is slanted slightly forward and is almost even with the bottom bumper and uh, then can't slightly back. Um, so the front edge of the hood is in a point with Ford lettering F-O-R-D across the front edge of this this slanted surface Almost makes the pickup look like it's going fast just sitting still I think it's it's one of the most beautiful things about about this body style This particular pickup has a dent right over towards the driver's side of the hood towards the uh, the first rise and, uh, you know, I can only imagine that maybe the farmer that had owned this before had hit a post or uh, maybe a cow ran into him. It's, it's hard to say. But all of those dents and the scratches and any of the scrapes and the things that are on this pickup tell a story. <clears throat> when you come down to the grill, the grill is once again pointed out towards the middle, sloped out, and sits farther forward than the bottom of the grill, you know, lending to that the pickup looking like like it's going fast, almost like the pickup, the front edge of it is, is leaned forward. The headlights are set very wide out into the, the sides of the, the fenders. And uh, the tops of, uh, the tops of my, my uh, headlight bezels, they're starting to show some weathering and some age. It's one of the things that I really like about this pickup is that it, uh, it's aged and it's aged very well and gracefully. But all of the little, the little things about it, you know, they, they only get to be this way once. It's not restored by any means or stretch. On the sides of the hood, they come flat down and meet up with the fender. And it's got a tall hood. But uh, 
at the front edge there's a chrome piece uh, that says Ford 100 with a reflector, an orange reflector in the front. That's something that you'll see in, in all of these. The reflectors were mandated at one point in time. On the side of the, the passenger side of the hood, the, you can obviously see where the vehicle has been painted, or the hood at least, has been painted one time before. And the paint's peeling off, not, uh, not exposing a huge amount of rust, but just, just starting to peel and age. And as you come down the side of the pickup, there's uh, one of my favorite favorite features, uh, body styling wise, of this pickup, or of this uh, this generation of Ford pickup. And they call it the bump side. And that's because there's a bump in the side of the pickup, and it's a it's a rather wide uh, body body crease that pokes outwards. Mine happens to have the uh, the custom cab trim, or the the better trim. I don't know for sure that it's custom cab. But uh, the stainless trim, polished with black around the edges, and it comes to a point right at the front. Everything at the front of this pickup is, is as though it's going forward, moving forward and, and pointing at something. And I love these bump sides, and these bump sides go all the way to the back of the pickup. The back side of the cab is very thick and wide and meets up with the door with the rain drip edge meeting up at the where the box about at box level and coming all the way up to the top of the door very close to the top edge of the door and all the way around the front windshield which curves just just slightly around the sides of the pickup um, this particular pickup another one of my my things that I really love about it when I got it the antenna was uh, was barbed wire and I thought really hard about replacing it and I decided against it um, I just just couldn't bring myself to do it. It was something that somebody had done at one point in time to pick up reception. And it actually works, you know, so there's no need to. So it's just a piece that goes with this pickup that makes it so special to me. The top side of the cab is white. Like I said, you've got blue on the top edge of the pickup and white at the bottom. But where that departs is at the top edge of the cab where the white carries across around the front of the windshield and down to the to the edge of the box and around the back of the cab. At the back of the cab there's a rather rather big expanse of metal and instead of the window coming all the way out to the edges of the cab it sits very much inside inside the edges. The doors are chrome and at the box level there's a chrome strip that comes from where it meets up with the door around the back of the cab to the other door. On the passenger side of this pickup, another one of those unique things, I've got uh, the, the small little racy mirror here, uh, kind of a small rectangular item, and, and to be perfectly honest, it's pretty useless as far as seeing in it as a mirror. The front wet fender wells go relatively square down to the front of the wheels, and the wheels themselves are a, uh, are a white spoke pattern. Um, five bolts and a chrome center cap and in mine I've purposely let them build up a little bit of pitting and rust because when I put these rims on here they really just didn't match the pickup the pickup is so weathered and aged and old you know showing showing minor little pock marks and uh, and a little rust spot through the back of the front fender and so I've allowed these wheels to age and tarnish so that they match the rest of the pickup I have put uh, you know some lower profile tires on the front and uh, wider tires on the rear so that the pickup looks like it's canted forward and it gives it a pretty racy look as far as I, I'm concerned. At the back edge of the fender well, which is flared out the entire length, it sweeps sharply back towards the back of the pickup and once again with the front edge of the fender well being, being squared off and the back edge sweeping back, I just Think it lends to that that look of going fast and and moving forward when you come back to the doors uh, one of one of the things that I love about this this body of pickup is the way the doors open and shut they 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 shut with such an authoritative clunk you know and these cabs are notorious for being very tight very uh, very good cabs and I, I love the way the doors feel. They're heavy, they, uh, and, and they, just, they just feel good. You push the door shut, it closes. You don't have to push or slam. And I love the noise it makes. 
insides of the doors, there's, there's an armrest that is vinyl, just a very simple armrest and a door pull right in that, uh, right in that armrest that you have to pull with all four fingers. And sometimes you have to pull kind of hard, but uh, it opens every time, opens and shuts, and uh, with that same noise that I talked about, the rest of the door panels are all metal in a corrugated, kind of a rippled edge. And the interior of the cab is all blue, just like the, uh, the top side of the pickup. The dash comes, the dash is flat and expansive. There's room to put all kinds of stuff, which I'm not exactly sure is a great thing. But it's, it sweeps back towards you and just like the grill, it matches and the bottom edge of the dash is closer to the firewall than the top edge of the dash. And that top edge also has a vinyl pad on it. Um, which, and somebody will probably correct me on this, but I think this was the first time that Ford put the vinyl dashes top edge and uh, it was for safety purposes. They were worried about people bonking their heads off the metal dashes. But the first time that Ford had done that. In this pickup I have bucket seats out of a 96 uh, F250 <clears throat> with a jump seat and a fold up center in the middle. That's so that I have cup holders. And the shifter, when you drive it, it's tall, it sticks up, and it's very, very clunky, very mechanical feeling. This pickup is a four-speed, and so the shift pattern is all the way towards you as you're sitting in the driver's seat, and up for first, which is a low gear, which I very rarely use, because in this, uh, this T18, it's, uh, it's just pretty, pretty useless. It, when you sit in the driver's seat, the steering wheel is large, and and though small rimmed, it feels good in your hands. It it falls into place, and it's not too close to your lap, but it's not too high up, and it gives you a, an excellent view of the of the dash, the gauges, where there where each one of the gauges, and I have all four of them: the fuel, the temp, the the uh, volts, and the oil, with a uh, a cheap auto auto gauge tack, which would have been pretty popular for the era hanging off of the steering column, but all of the gauges, including the speedometer, are sweeping design. So the center of the dash is taken up by the, or the center of the gauge cluster, excuse me, is taken up by the speedometer with a needle that sweeps from one side to the other from uh, zero to 100 miles an hour. I have had this pickup at 100 miles an hour. As we move to the back of the pickup, the top edges of the box are once again very flat and smooth and there's holes towards the front and you can imagine that uh, some farmer at one point in time probably had a had a toolbox or something of that nature bolted to the front of the box and then coming down the side you can feel once again that bump side that I just love about these pickups with that stainless trim on the passenger side of this pickup down towards the bottom of the front edge of the box there's also a toolbox, which uh, was an option on some of these vehicles. And this one actually is functional. I've seen a lot of them that, uh, that uh, you know, people can't get open for one reason or another. And then to the back, as you move further back, once again, the fender wells are kind of cut sharp to the front and swept to the back to keep the pickup moving like it's, or looking like it's moving forward. I've got big, bigger, wider tires on the rear. These tires are actually a 27560, which, which makes the tire, you know, about, about uh, 10 inches wide, nearly, with those same uh, white wagon wheels, white spokes. I've got the exhaust run out of this pickup, very close to the rear tires, but swept back at about a 45 degree angle. Um, and it's one of those things that I like the look of more than anything. <clears throat> As you come around the box, and the box you'll find to be very, very rounded. And you come to the tail lights, which are a large rectangular piece that take up the vast majority of the side of the box as you move into the tailgate. This tailgate happens to be another one of those farmer special type of deals um, where somebody either bought it off of, uh, who knows, J.C. Whitney, or perhaps it was even built. The inside of the box is weathered and abused like it's been used, and I know that this pickup was a farm pickup. There's holes throughout the box that uh, I can only imagine might have been used for, uh, you know, sprayer tanks or fuel tanks or otherwise. Um, 
I actually have LED tail lights in this pickup, um, which light up just fantastic. And they're trimmed, the tail lights are, in another stainless piece. You know, these are, are getting dull and they're starting to lose their polish that they match the rest of the pickup so well. The side of the driver's the, the driver's side of the box is uh, is starting to show some of the white coming through. And you can imagine, you know, the years of conversations because there's a very well-worn spot to the front of the box and a well-worn spot to the rear of the box. And having grown up uh, having grown up on a farm or ranch, I can remember multiple times where you'd sit in the side of the field or a pasture somewhere with two old men leaned up against the side of the box. And you have to imagine that two old men had leaned up against the side of this one, you know, over the course of many hours and, and had worn the paint off in these two places. The same with the driver's side door. There's uh, It's well weathered where the window rolls down on the edge. And you know that somebody had spent many, many miles in this pickup with their arm hanging out in the wind, cruising to the next field or to the next pasture to do whatever it was that this pickup was doing for that, uh, for that farmer that I got it from. The mirror on this side, however, happens to be a, uh, a towing mirror, which very possibly could have been put on this pickup because maybe the farmer that had it was, uh, was using it to pull a trailer around here or there or the next place. And it's another one of those things that even though it's, uh, it's not perfect because it doesn't match the mirror on the passenger side, I just like the way it is. It, uh, you know, it, it tells the story of what the pickup is and what it was used for. The, uh, as you come down to the front of the driver's side fender, you can see that there's rust breaking through where the mud over years and years has packed up in and caught in a spot. And, uh, and it started to rust. And I'm, I'm doing my best to, uh, to try and keep it clean. The people that can see this video will, will see that, uh, <laughs> You know, the pickup is pretty dirty. It's because we've got, uh, we got snow melting off. But nonetheless, I'm doing the best I can to preserve it. As you get in the cab, and Shelby gets in with me, you sit in the seat and you get a vision, or you get a view of the gauges and of the dash, and, and everything is, is very easy to hand and well laid out. You only have to lean forward slightly. The key switch to your left, and uh, four pedals, the e-brake pedal, clutch, brake, and gas with my uh, AFR gauge to the, uh, to the right, just above the gas pedal. The shifter falls right into your hand as you sit into the seat, into this seat and feels good as you run it through each one of the gears. Very mechanical, very clunky. In this particular case, not very good for shifting fast, but, you know, it just feels right for the pickup. My favorite thing about this pickup at this point in time, though, is the sound and the feeling you get when you fire it up. I just, I feel good every time I, I turn the key. As you reach to the key to the left, turn it to the on position. Fires up with an authoritative growl. Good. and settles into a nice idle. Love the way this pickup sounds, the way it barks. And as you wrap the throttle, the pickup sways back and forth. There's so many things that I love about this pickup and I feel that it's very unfortunate that you're not able to actually see pieces of equipment like this, Joel. And uh, I really hope that this video has given you some kind of a picture of, of what this pickup looks like. And, uh, and maybe all the rest of you, including Joel, hopefully you get to see some of the things that I see when I look at, uh, at this particular pickup. A lot of pe people would say that this pickup is ugly or that it should be restored or that I should, uh, should care for it better. I prefer to think that the pickup as it sits tells a story. That the pickup, uh, you know, as I said before, can only be this way once, and that it would actually be a, a larger disrespect to, uh, to restore this pickup at its state right now and uh, disregard its history 
and, and what the pickup is and was to somebody else and now is to me now. So, I guess, Joel, I hope that, uh, hope I've answered all your questions. And uh, feel free to ask me for a video description anytime. I'm not sure that I nailed this one, but uh, hey, give me a, give me a E for effort, I guess, maybe anyways. And uh, to all the rest of you that watched it and made it through this, uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you guys will uh, stay tuned and catch me in another video.